In the Pacific Northwest, one thing we've always had plenty of is trees. And so for a long time, the standard roofing material around here, starting with the Indians, was wood. And in more recent times, that meant shakes or shingles. The difference between a wood shake and a wood shingle is that at least one side of a wood shake is split rather than sawn. But a shingle is sawn on both sides. Now sometimes a wood shake is sawn on one side and split on the other. But if it's not a split face facing up, it's a shingle and not a shake. There are only about two or three other options for roofing material, normally speaking. Metal, you know, tin roofs, metal roofs have been around a long time and are still available and they're great. Tile, whether it's clay or concrete, has been around for a long time and they work fine. But the all around winner in the competition for who it is that is the best roofing shingle to be used in most cases residentially all over the place, especially in the Pacific Northwest, is an asphalt shingle. It's my opinion because anybody can buy them, they're affordable, and the labor to put them on is manageable. Not only that, but they are very forgiving if you do get damage from a falling tree or you know a terrible windstorm comes through or you know who knows who knows what it could be. But all in all, the water runs off and they last a good long time. So I've got to assume that you've been watching our house building series. And if you've been watching, then you watched us put over 10 tons of these shingles on this roof. And so you got a good look at a lot of processes associated with this, but we didn't explain every part of the shingle itself. And so I'm going to take just a second and show you what it is about these Tamco shingles. By the way, thank you Tamco. Couldn't be happier with the product that you sponsored. But let me show you some of the details that make these a remarkably good asphalt shingle. The manufacturing process on a shingle like this is complex. It starts out with fiberglass mats that are then infused with asphalt. Now asphalt is some sort of a oil product. I can't explain to you what it is. I don't have to. But it's perfect for a roof because once it's infused in the fiberglass, then these granules can be put on which provide the actual surface that resists ultraviolet radiation and, and provides resistance to abrasion and makes that rough and strong and permanent surface that sort of defines the color and the function of an asphalt shingle. But it's not just one layer of that, it's two layers. You've got the layer on the bottom, the layer on the top. They are laminated in a strip down the middle, which is clearly marked. And altogether, this stuff adds up to a very long lasting asphalt shingle, which is a big improvement over the old three tab solution to asphalt shingles. Obviously, nails are the important fastener. And Tamco goes to a great deal of trouble to make sure you understand, if you look at the videos on their website, exactly what nails and exactly where to place them. But there's another aspect to these particular shingles that is probably just as important as the nails, and that is this strip of adhesive that is located on the bottom edge of every shingle. When they're put in according to instructions, this strip of adhesive welds itself at the lamination line on the lower course. Now this other strip is a release agent that facilitates transportation and not having the shingles weld themselves together in the stack before you're ready. But the thing that I just want to point out is that this combination of nails and adhesives makes this a bulletproof membrane that adheres to every irregularity of your roof when they're installed correctly. I think it's brilliant. I think it's the pinnacle of asphalt shingle technology, and I for one can't imagine how it could ever be improved. So if you're getting ready to put a roof on, whether you're doing it yourself or hiring a pro, you got skin in the game. You're spending money, you want a good roof. Now that probably is going to extend, if you hire somebody, to the roofer also, because if he's reputable and he's part of your community, he does not want your roof to fail. His name's attached to it, if you pick the right roofer. 
But there's someone else who has a real vested interest in your roof functioning properly, and that's the manufacturer. Because however many roofs you put on in your life, or however many roofs your roofer puts on in his life, is dwarfed by the thousands and tens of thousands of roofs that are put on with a product that is manufactured by, for instance, Tamco Building Products. And so they are highly motivated to get the information out there so that people put their, put their product on correctly. So to this point, I've just got to say that whatever it is that Nate and I have learned about making videos, we are both profoundly impressed by the instructional videos that Tamco has on their website. They're short, they're concise, they're clear, and if you watch those videos, you and your roofer are going to know exactly how they ought, you ought to install Tamco shingles or anybody else's shingles for that matter. So I highly recommend that just for your own information, you check out their how-to videos on their website. So if you watch those videos, when you're done, you're gonna say, wait a minute, Wadsworth didn't follow every one of their preferred practices exactly. And that's right, um, I'm old school. There are some things that I can only think of doing in one particular way. But here's what I want you to remember. You can't go wrong if you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Tamco knows their business. Thank you, Tamco, for making such a huge contribution to the successful outcome of this project. And to each one of you that are watching, thank you. Couldn't do it without you. Thanks for watching, Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.